Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. And now, The Baker and the Princess, Part 3. Antoine and Clotilde ran toward the kitchens. Genevieve ran to the great hall, where by now her father, the king, would be eating his lunch. Raphael was taking a souffle out of the oven. How wonderful it smelled. Just as it was carried out the door on its way to the king, Antoine and Clotilde entered. Raphael saw him. He was surprised. Then he smirked. Come to claim something? He asked Antoine. Qui? Oui, in fact, I have, Antoine replied. You will never have it back. It is done. I am the best now. I bake the souffles. They are mine, Raphael mocked. We will see about that, said Clotilde. She kept her eyes focused on him and took a step toward him. Suddenly, Raphael could not move. He tried to, but he was frozen. Never take a witch's word. You may think you are protected, but you are not. There are forces more powerful than she. Forces of good. She pointed down at his ring finger and said, Bubbles and blisters, fires and caves. Break the spell and all be saved. Raphael's hand lifted into the air and the ring began to move. It shimmied and slid all the way off Raphael's finger and straight into Clotilde's hand. It is done, she said to a stunned Antoine. Magic, my dear, she explained. Now come, we do not have much time. Drelvina will know something is amiss soon enough and we must catch her before she does. They left the kitchen, leaving Raphael to see the mess he had created. No longer under the spell, the food was rancid. Moldy cakes, crumbling cookies, and fallen souffles. Genevieve made it to the great hall, just in time for the souffle to be served to her father before Clotilde had broken the spell. It looked delicious, but before the king could take one bite, he saw Genevieve. My darling daughter, he embraced her. We have searched the land, scoured every nook, every corner looking for you. Where have you been? asked the king. I went to visit a friend, father, Antoine, the baker, Genevieve replied. But why? He would return soon enough, he said. There is evil here, father. A witch cast a spell, taking Antoine's talent and delivering it to Raphael. Didn't you wonder why he was so quickly the most talented baker in all of France? Well, I did wonder that, but I assumed he was always quite good and so had honed his craft, perhaps. I don't know. The souffles were so delectable, to be honest, my child, I did not care. Do not eat the food, father. It is cursed. We will break the spell and all will be right, she told him. But first I must find Jacques. <laughs> Ridiculous, he laughed. Come, take a bite. See how delightful it is. But when the king turned back to his table, the sight shocked him. What is this? he said. The spell had broken, and the food, same as in the kitchen, was rotten. The spell, father, it is broken, you see? Raphael enlisted the help of a witch, Genevieve told him. Just then, Jacques stepped forward. A witch, you say? He asked the princess. Oui, she replied. 
How do you know this? He inquired. Clotilde, Genevieve said, and she asks that you come with me. She is here, he said, not believing it. We have no time to waste, Genevieve said. Together, they went to the entrance of the dungeons. Antoine and Clotilde were already there, waiting. Jacques embraced the good witch. It has been too long, he said to her. Oui, she replied. But now is not the time. Drelvina must be vanquished. So it was her. I sensed something was amiss when Raphael began to bake almost as well as Antoine. But I believed when I trapped her all those years ago that she could never escape, said Jacques. She found the rings, Clotilde told him. Oh, Jacques asked, surprised. I do not know, but what does it matter? We must stop her. Once and for all, Clotilde declared. We must, Jacques agreed. Antoine, can you accompany us? It is a dangerous mission, but we may need you. Princess, you stay here. Absolutely not, Genevieve said defiantly. We go together or we do not go at all. She is strong. She will help us. Clotilde told Jacques. And what if she is hurt? The princess of France. Do you want to be the one who tells her father? Jacques asked. We need the second ring. Once we have that, Genevieve, you and Antoine will go, Clotilde said. Genevieve nodded. She understood. Let us go. We have no more time to waste, Clotilde said. Down the steps and into the tunnels they went. It was dark. Jacques stopped. And with a single word, Bougie Mière! A flame appeared over his hand. And with the torch lighting the way, they continued. Through the tunnels they went, winding around until they reached the door. Before Jacques could extinguish his flame, they heard her. Come in, she said. Clotilde opened the door with a twist of her hand. The door creaked open, revealing Drelvina waiting by the fire, her toad in her lap. So, you retrieved Raphael's ring, have you? Drelvina asked. We have, Clotilde replied. Come for mine now, I suppose. You won't get it, just like you never really defeated me, said the witch. But we will, said Jacques. Drelvina cackled. <laughs> Spit, commanded Drelvina. Her toad opened its mouth and let out a huge cloud. It was green. Jacques threw up his hand, pointed a finger, and a shield formed. The cloud could come no closer. On my command, said Clotilde. Antoine and Genevieve nodded. Clotilde tapped her foot three times, took a deep breath in, then let it out. The room shook, and just as suddenly, everything was still. Drelvina began to shrink. And she continued to shrink until she was no bigger than a grape. Antoine and Genevieve knew the timing was now and rushed 
threw Jacques's shield toward the witch. What had not changed in size was the ring and Drovina's toad. There they both sat right next to her. She screamed and squealed, but there was no sound. She was just that tiny. Genevieve put the ring into her pocket and just as suddenly, Drovina began to grow, little by little. Go! cried Clotilde. And go they did, out the door and back into the tunnels. They did not stop until they reached the door at the top of the stairs. Once in the hallway, they took note of everything. They had Drelvina's ring, and deep inside Antoine's pocket was Raphael's. They waited, hoping Clotilde and Jacques would come soon enough. Meanwhile, Clotilde and Jacques did not wait for Drelvina to come back to full form. Jacques pulled his necklace from his neck. I had hoped never to use this, but it seems the time has come, he said. He twisted the small charm, opening it. He covered the top with his hand, closed his eyes, and took a deep breath. Then, when he removed his hand, a roar came from inside. Not a lion's roar, but the roar of the wind. Then, something very surprising happened. Before Dralvina got any bigger, her toad hopped over to her and swallowed her right up. Clotilde and Jacques could not believe it. But why? Jacques asked, more to himself than anyone else. Then, more surprisingly, Felix the toad spoke. I was tired of doing her bidding, he said. How did she get the rings? Clotilde asked. That's a story for another time, Felix replied. Jacques put his charm away. From his sack, he took out a glass box with an intricate gold lock. He put the toad inside and ran his hand over the lock. It locked in several different places. So it is done, said Jacques. Then he handed the box to Clotilde. I leave them to you, he said. I will never let them out of my sight, she replied. I'm sorry, Toad. You'll just have to stay in there. We can't let you out, at least until I know Drelvina is really gone. I don't mind it so much, as long as a fly or two can get in, he said. When they arrived at the base of the steps, Jacques stopped and took Clotilde's hand. Please stay. It has been long enough that we have been apart, he said. I will consider it, she replied. They found Genevieve and Antoine waiting for them. The rings, Clotilde inquired. Genevieve and Antoine produced the golden rings of Rattan. Before, both rings had been tarnished and dull. But now, in Genevieve and Antoine's hands, they were shiny and new. Suddenly, the king appeared. He was so pleased to see Antoine and his daughter together and that they would soon be family. He asked only one thing, that the wedding would be as soon as possible. Well. We will need a cake, Antoine told him. Then a big one, and two souffles for me, s'il vous plaît, the king ordered. The pâtissier went straight to the kitchen. Antoine picked up a bowl and a spatula and found that he could bake once more. 
his gift had returned. They rejoiced, and then Antoine got to work with Genevieve at his side. For two days they baked. The wedding cake would be one like no one had ever seen. They were married on a Sunday, with Jacques and Clotilde by their side, and the king happily watching while eating his souffles. Drelvina had been vanquished, and Clotilde would guard that box with her life. Raphael had been banished, Drelvina had been vanquished, and Clotilde would guard that box with her life. And the toad waited to tell his story. The end. And now it's time to take a deep breath, close our eyes, so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>